Hi, it's Sue from Sue's Book Nook. Today I'll be doing my top 10 from 2016. These are books that I read during 2016, not necessarily published during that year, and I'll not be putting them in any particular order. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, I read Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Uh, this is a book about the apocalypse coming. Uh, we have Aziraphale, who's an angel, and Crowley, who's a demon, living on Earth. And they've been enjoying their life on Earth. Uh, Crowley loves driving around in fast cars and things like that. They're both very settled, but Crowley's tasked with a job, a very important one. There are two babies born on the same day. One of them is the Antichrist, and he needs to switch those two babies. Things don't get go exactly according to plan, and um, hilarity ensues. Uh, we have the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse and the lesser known Horsemen of the Apocalypse who like to keep changing their names. This book just literally had me in stitches. I was laughing my way entirely through the whole thing. Um, I've read other Neil Gaiman books before. This is the first time I've encountered Terry Pratchett. Absolutely love this. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a really good comic novel. Next, I read All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. Uh, this is a book set in World War II and it follows three separate narratives. The first is a French girl who is slowly going blind and as the darkness sort of descends over her eyes, it's also descending over her country as uh, the Nazis are invading France. We also follow a young orphan boy from Germany and he is destined for a rather bleak life in the mines where his father passed away but it's discovered that he has a talent for electronics and radios and instead he is sent to a school for the Hitler Youth. It's sort of a dark, bleak looking future for him too as he sees the way the children are taught to treat those that are weaker than them um, and even though he wants to succeed uh, in his abilities and show what he can do, it's sort of, you know, he's kind of trapped in this awkward situation. Uh, and then we also follow a third narrative, which is that of a German soldier. He is on the hunt for a rare diamond that went missing from the museum where the French girl's father had worked. So all these three narratives kind of flow in a non-linear format um, and eventually kind of converge at the end. Um, it's a beautifully written book. We see the war through the eyes of these children, and it just held me captivated throughout the whole thing, and I highly recommend this one. Next, we have another book that also uh, covers the wars. This is uh, actually two wars. It spans World War I and II beginning in 1910. This is Kate Atkinson's Life After Life. Through this book we follow the life of one Ursula Todd. Uh, she was born in 1910 on a snowy day where um, she dies shortly after because uh, she is born with the cord wrapped around her neck and the doctor can't get to her in time. Then she's born again, 1910. Same day, lives a bit longer, the doctor was able to get there in time. And this life sort of repeats over and over again extending a little bit further or on different paths each time as sort of subtle changes are made, little ripples uh, that affect her life and those around her. Um, the book begins with a rather uh, interesting uh, scenario at the beginning and it seems like this book shows you how she reaches that point and all the false kind of steps along the way. Um, through this we see the blitz, we see we also see the bombing from the point of the German side as she ends up in different uh, locations as she takes different paths and you can see how subtle little changes can not only affect your own life but those of the, around you and again a beautifully written book uh, it led me to want to read more by Kate Atkinson including A God in Ruins which is sort of a companion novel to this one where we follow the life of Ursula Todd's brother. Next I read I Capture the Castle by Dodie Smith. Uh, this is a book told through the journals of Cassandra Mortman a young girl who is attempting to become the writer that her father once was. He does not seem to have any inspiration anymore, he can't write anything, and the, the family sort of sliding into poverty. Um, almost like they aren't even aware of it at times, uh, but they've become much more aware of it when two young gentlemen uh, kind of come into their lives. Uh, the one sister of Cassandra seems to think that marriage might be a way out for the family and to be able to help them out as well. Um, but Cassandra thinks that, of course, rightly so, that um, one should only marry for love. Um, there's uh, some funny scenes within this um, that had me laughing out loud, uh, a part where Cassandra and her sister are going to pick up some old fur coats and things that they apparently inherited. Um, they're a bit outdated in style. Uh, the sister puts on one that looks like a bear, and she says, I think it is bear. And then she is wearing it um, by the train station on their way home and is actually missed taken for a bear and uh, a chase ensues and it was just had me laughing out loud again. Um, but I really enjoyed uh, the story, uh, the way it unfolded and uh, sort of a coming of age novel for this young woman. Also making my list is Anne Bronte's The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. This is the first book I've read by this author uh, and I'm looking forward to reading more including uh, Agnes Grey which I think was her first one. 
Um, this is a very early feminist novel. Written around 1846, it portrays a young woman by the name of Helen Huntington, who, along with her uh, young son, move into Wildfell Hall. Uh, it's believed that she is a widow because it is unheard of that uh, a woman would have been on her own or have left her husband, but that is indeed what is occurred here. Her husband is rather abusive, drunkard, and in order to protect her young son from this bad influence, she has left him. Now, uh, she keeps her uh, identity sort of secret, uh, doesn't talk about her past, tries to keep her distance from the village, um, but there are slowly kind of rumors flying around about her background. Uh, the first part of the story is told by Gilbert, a neighbor of hers, who first encounters her son and then Helen, and starts to form an attachment to both of them, uh, beginning to fall in love with her and expresses his feelings for her, but she constantly rebuffs him and won't say much more about it. But then these rumors start to fly and he starts to kind of be affected by them and confronts her again. And finally she decides to um, tell her story and that's where the second narrative is told from her point of view in a series of journals and things that she kept um, that tells about her past. And I really love this particular book and um, it's sort of challenging, um, you know, the laws of the land at the time and it was very forward thinking um, in the way that it, it, it showed the horrible situation that women were put in and, and the lack of rights and, uh, and laws in their favor that this woman would have had to stay in this unhappy marriage um, and risk you know, her son falling in these same footsteps. Uh, but it was, it was just so well written. I enjoyed this much more than I even enjoyed Jane Eyre or uh, Wuthering Heights. Um, and I highly recommend this if you want to take a little foray into uh, a really readable and uh, accessible classic. Also making my list is George Orwell's 1984. Of course, this is a classic dystopian. It brings us um, the party, the thought police, and of course, Big Brother is watching. Um, I know this book is selling off the shelves right now, and there's an intriguing little quote uh, at the back of this here, which I'm going to go ahead and read to you. Um, makes you think. 1984 has profound implications for our times. It points the path towards which society may now be heading and leaves the reader with the shocked feeling that there is no single horrible feature in the world of 1984, only two generations away, which is not present in embryo today. Of course, this was written in 1949, so we're a lot closer to that time or in the middle of it as we speak. Um, which brings me to another book that I read that also makes the list, uh, which is sort of Big Brother watching today. And this is The Circle by Dave Eggers. Um, in this book, we follow a young intern by the name of Mae Holland, and she goes to work for a rather large internet company known as The Circle, who has their kind of hands in everything. And for them, sharing is caring. They want everything out in the open and um, create technology to be able to put cameras everywhere and uh, just open up everything to social media, including everything within the workforce as well. She finds herself um, being joined to different groups um, uh, with her fellow employees and uh, oh you did you know someone posted something but you didn't like click like and all this stuff and she starts to get really caught up in this entire um, world uh, which is it's it's everything is open and it, it really makes you think um, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about this because I did go ahead and post a full review on that so I'm gonna link that down below but it really makes you second um, guess you know in terms of Big Brother watching in this case this particular book shows how we, um, as a society, you know, put everything out there out in the open almost, you know, the daily vlogging, YouTube videos, Facebook, Twitter, how many times you just click like on something, you're constantly sharing little bits of your life and where's that privacy and it's, it's really kind of a creepy book. The more I read it, the more I was a little creeped out and um, a funny situation happened, but I put that in a review, so go ahead and check that out, but I highly recommend reading this one by Dave Eggers. In 2015, I featured a book on my top 10 list by Dawn Kurtigich. It was The Dead House. Uh, absolutely loved it. It's sort of a YA horror book. And making my top 10 this year is Dawn's second book. This is called The Creeper Man. Uh, it's also known as And the Trees Crept In. In This is the US cover and title. And this is the UK cover. Um, I just happened to like this cover a lot. And it came out sooner, so I picked it up right away. Um, she writes the best horror books ever. Um, this is a story of two young girls, uh, Scylla and her younger sister, Nori, who doesn't talk. Uh, they have run away from a rather abusive home life uh, to their aunt's farmhouse, uh, surrounded by woods. And their aunt, Catherine, uh, says that now they're there, they probably will not be able to leave because the creeper man who lives in the woods will not let them pass. Now the creeper man is sort of a character that she and Catherine and their sisters created out of bits of wood and mud and cloth and um, they were just really young at the time and they thought they'll create this sort of protector for them. 
and uh, it ends up with like no face or anything. They kind of left it a bit unfinished. And it almost kind of looks like this creature you kind of see here's a head and the arms and this body, which it took me forever to even realize that was on this cover. But um, yeah, it's apparently a very strange creature, kind of like a Slender Man type character, and he lives out in the woods. Uh, the story, it, it, it unsettles you the whole time you're reading it and the way she writes her books is in such a unique format too that makes it even more captivating. There's uh, these little symbols here you see. These are journal entries from Scylla. There's also some handwritten notes um, from her younger sister within here. As you see in this sort of writing through here, there's bits of post-it notes. Um, and there's also sometimes text hidden within text with these bold prints. Um, the formatting of her books just really draws you right in. Um, and even the little poems at the beginning of every chapter were fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and read you the one in the back. There's a man in the trees, a man with no eyes, but still he watches. That's the surprise. Stay away from the woods. It couldn't be clearer, but the trees are creeping nearer and nearer. Beware the creeper man. Hence the other title of the, the U.S. cover and the trees crept in because slowly they're being surrounded and the trees are moving closer and closer. And yeah, I, I, I don't know what to say about this book. It, it just, it was fantastic. That's, that's the best I can say. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, this is, like I said, it's just our second book and I'm just rambling, but I can't help myself. I absolutely loved it. I had the dead house as my staff rec um, at work at Barnes & Noble last year. Um, this book, it, the U.S. version, is on my staff rec for this year. Uh, absolutely love it and I highly recommend you read her books. You will not be sorry. You may be a little creeped out, but you won't be sorry. Uh, also on that creepy kind of note is another horror book that I read. This is an adult horror um, called Slade House by David Mitchell. I previously read The Bone, uh, Cro Bone Clocks um, by David Mitchell because I was told that those two book these two books sort of are linked together and uh, some people recommended reading that one first because of some characters that reappear in this one. Now in The Bone Clocks, um, we're following this young woman by the name of Holly Sykes and there's like several different narratives and each narrative is, is in some way tied to Holly Sykes's life. She's like the thread that binds the entire book together and there are voices that she used to hear uh, that she nicknamed the radio people and they play a sort of an important part within that book and also carry on over into here. Uh, within this book is also several different narratives but what ties the story together is Slade House. Uh, there's a brother and sister, very mysterious, that live within this house. This house sort of makes its appearance. It sort of remains hidden most of the time, but appears to certain people. It draws them for a certain reason into the house, and then they're gone. And um, I found myself gasping out loud when I reached certain points that kind of link these two books together. Uh, it is definitely one of the best haunted house books I have read in a long time. There's so much more going on, again, with these radio people that it kind of tied together with this book as well. Uh, it was absolutely fascinating. If you plan on picking this one up, I still would pretty much recommend reading the other one first. It's a bit of a chunker of a book compared to this one, which is much smaller, um, but I absolutely love this one. The final book on my list is a debut novel by Ian Reid. This is I Am Thinking of Ending Things. Uh, I did a full review on this book, uh, I think around March. I'll put a link to that one down below as well. Uh, this was a fascinating book, kind of a psychological thriller that will leave you unsettled the whole time you're reading it. It literally says you'll be scared, but you won't know why, and it's true. Uh, it's the story of Jake and his girlfriend. They are uh, driving down like a secluded road uh, to a farm where his Jake's parents live um, and she's going to be meeting them for the first time but the entire time she's sort of rethinking the relationship and whether she wants to end it. Um, suddenly Jake takes a sort of a detour um, during the trip uh, to a deserted high school and you start to wonder what's going on here? Why are they there? What Things just just don't feel right the entire time you are reading this and you'll find yourself just flying through it. It's literally a very quick um, short little novel that you just don't want to put down. Um, this book is now making the rounds around work and several employees have read it and uh, are all enjoying it. It's got a, quite an interesting twist um, that you get to at the end that I found absolutely fascinating. Highly enjoyed this one. So yeah, that is my top 10. If you guys have read any of these below, uh, tell me what you thought about them or if you're kind of intrigued by this and you think you might want to pick any of them up. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.